Late in 1960, there was a program that came out on the British Broadcasting Network, or the BBC, that was talking about a new machine. They came out and the ad started off with a group singing, It's here! It's here! The first Fordson major in the superclass. They went on to state, For real economy, reliability, power, and new versatility, don't take a chance, sir. Fordson's your answer. The new super major is here. Hi, I'm Dan Perkins, and welcome back to the Inman Farm Heritage Days. You join us under somewhat a British-looking sky right now. Maybe we can avoid the rain for a little bit to talk about a British-built tractor. Fordson, most people think of when they think of a Fordson, they're thinking of the early Fordsons that Henry Ford built, the F-type that would have come out in about 1917 and been through the 20, through the 20s. We have a 1925 model F Fordson here. It's also what you'll notice on our logo at the beginning of the video or even on our hats is those early Fordsons. That's what most people think. But Henry Ford took the Fordson to England during the war. And after the war, a lot of people kind of thought Ford was really favorable to England for keeping it there, for helping them get through the war and helping provide them a new product, which really helped them win the war and really helped English families survive better. After that, he also built a massive factory in a town called Dagenham, which is uh, near, it's outside of Essex, as I'm best to understand. And if I get that wrong, that's from my pastor who calls them Fords of Dagenham. So if I said it wrong, I'm sorry for guests abroad. It's, that's how we're pronouncing it. We're not calling it Dagenham like Birmingham, Alabama, but Dagenham, England. The plant was massive that they constructed in Dagenham. They built trucks under the Thames name, Fordson Thames Trucks. They built cars there, but also they really built a lot of tractors and they really got the tractor scene figured out for the British market. The Major came about in the third variation of the N series, which later became known as the E27N in 1945. But to replace it, the Major name was on that tractor, but they came out with what was called the New Major, which is very similar to what you see here. Coming out in 1951, the British really figured out diesel engines a lot more than we did. They were using diesel first. They were using it for the primary power, whereas we were using gasoline here in the United States. But they really had a lot of things figured out. This particular engine in this tractor is a 4D, 220 cubic inch diesel engine that was built in Dagenham with a Sims injection pump. And they have gained quite the reputation around the globe for being almost bomb proof. These engines were probably the best exported engine of the time for power units, industrial units, trucks, and also these tractors. But in 1960, they really upped the game. In 1960, they came out with a tractor that had draft control hydraulics that they called Qualitrol, excuse me. They came out with dry type disc brakes on the back that were sealed from the elements. They gave the machine more power. They also gave it differential lock and several other features, and they gave it the name of Super Major. And that's what we have here. This is a 1960 Ford Super Major. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. It's about the same as most everything else we drag in on the farm here. It's been rough. We found this one down around Molina, Georgia, and in pretty rough shape, as you can tell, but we're able to get it picked up and got it home. And the true dependability and durability they were talking about with these machines has shined through because it may not look like it, but this tractor's already running. We did some really small work, honestly, to get this machine up and going. A little bit of injection pump work, uh, one stuck valve and a bent push rod, and then rebuilt the starter. And this machine actually runs and operates quite well. We've got some videos of it as we've been working through it, getting it prepared and getting it up and going. But it really has proved to us that Fordson really had it figured out. And it's going to be here. It's, I think this is the first Fordson that this has had, a British-built Fordson that the M&Farm Heritage Days is, and we're proud to have it here, and we hope you'll come by and see it soon in September. 